reveals for Smash Bros. There's just, there's just nothing else like them. The second fighter of the DLC Fighter Pass or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has been released. Hero is out with Banjo right around the corner. That leaves us with the two last remaining slots of the Fighter Pass battle. Challenger pack number four and five. So of course, since day one, everyone's been predicting and speculating and leaking potential characters to be these last remaining DLC fighters for Super Smash Bros. I think it's finally time to revisit that topic because we're basically halfway through the fighter pass of DLC. So we're at a good point in time now to really make an educated guess. Looking at the past trends of the previous DLC fighters, as well as comments Sakurai has made to really make an educated guess for who these last final remaining newcomers could be. That being said, there is no official rule book. At the end of the day, Sakurai can do whatever he wants literally whatever he wants. So there are no hard concrete rules, more like guidelines, kind of based on the trends that we've seen in these previous newcomer reveals. Cause what we have seen so far is safe to kind of expect it's going to follow a similar sort of pattern as well as Sakura has commented on the fact saying when Joker was first revealed at the Game Awards, he said, this is the first fighter. This is what you can kind of expect going forward for the fighter pass. So building off that comment right off the bat, whatever characters these last remaining two newcomers are gonna be are going to be big hitters. All of the characters from the fighter pass so far are some of, if not the most highly requested characters for Smash DLC, Joker, Dragon Quest Hero, Banjo-Kazooie, I don't, do I need to even explain myself? So when looking at the last remaining two fighters, it's good to kind of get in the mindset of thinking, okay, what are these two fighters are going to be? Two highly requested characters in both America as well as Japan, really worldwide. Building off of that, that brings us to our first guideline. The character must be a third party character. Now, yes, Sakurai could throw in a curveball right at the end to really subvert expectations, but it's more than likely the remaining Fighter Pass characters are as well going to follow the trend and be third-party characters. So far, most of these characters are brand new collaborations with Nintendo and whatever company the character comes from. Because the obvious exception is, of course, Hero. Yes, he's from Dragon Quest, but it's a Square property, which we already have Square representation being Cloud from Final Fantasy. So I think another guideline we should set for ourselves is these characters can be new or existing third-party collaborations with Nintendo. But these characters must represent a new series to collaborate with Smash Brothers. While that little amendment of it might not be as hard locked, I just don't see it being as likely for us to see another character representing a series that's already represented again in Smash Brothers. Unfortunately, this does kind of cross out hopes and supports of new Sonic characters like Tails, Knuckles, or even Eggman. I just personally don't think it's very likely that they're gonna be returning and revisiting a series that's already represented in Smash instead of actually representing a brand new series. It doesn't mean that they can't work with another company and bring another one of their series. Example, obviously already being Square. In addition to also like Capcom having multiple representatives already in the game. I wouldn't rule it out entirely of the possibility of being another character from an existing series, but I think it's more likely that it'll be a new series. So the next guideline for these DLC fighters is the character or series should have some sort of history with Nintendo. At the end of the day, Smash Bros is a celebration of Nintendo history, not just gaming history in general. If the series doesn't really have much association with Nintendo or Nintendo consoles, you know, it really wouldn't make sense as much to have them represented in Smash Brothers. The exception to that is already Joker. Persona 5 had never appeared on a Nintendo console at all. Since then, they've recently announced the new uh, Warriors game of Persona is going to be coming to the Switch. But I think Joker is the exception because the Persona series has had a long history with Nintendo consoles. It just so happens that Joker, specifically his game, hasn't appeared on a Nintendo console. At least yet, it could eventually, who knows. So I think in that case, for example, even though the Kim, the character himself, hasn't appeared on a Nintendo console, the series itself has. The same kind of goes, for example, Final Fantasy VII and Cloud. Well, yes, Final Fantasy VII is also now on Switch, but you know, that game is typically associated with PlayStation. However, on this other side of that, the Final Fantasy series also has a long going history with Nintendo consoles. So I think it's definitely likely that these last two remaining fighters Whatever series they come from, even if they're, the characters themselves have never appeared on a Nintendo console, perhaps the series have some sort of long-lasting appearance on Nintendo hardware. Let's move on to the final guideline of these DLC characters. The character needs to have some sort of defining feature or gimmick to their moveset. What I mean by that is the character really needs to feel unique compared to the rest of the cast in Smash Brothers. Sakurai has gone on record stating that, you know, these past recent newcomers, the ones that included in the base game, in addition to these DLC fighters, he really has strived to make each one feel super distinct and unique compared to the rest of the cast, bringing something new to the table. Joker has his persona system, Hero has his magic meter system, Piranha Plant, there's really nothing like him. He doesn't have legs or even arms. Other examples are like Ridley, you know, really unique specials where you can drag people across the stage 
which is down B. If you perfectly space it, you can do super damage. The Belmont Twins, you know, with their unique arsenal of projectiles, as well as using their long range whip for all their smash attacks, as well as aerials. And the list goes on. So I think it's safe to assume that the remaining two fighters of this DLC pass will have a moveset that makes them very unique to the rest of the cast. So I think that's a great kind of list of guidelines we can go off when coming to predicting these remaining two fighters of the DLC pass. I've arranged a little list of characters that we can quickly run through that meet a lot of these criteria are all highly requested as well as could make a lot of sense for being these final characters. First off, Kratos from God of War. Why yes, his series is long running in addition to the recent God of War that came out the other year was a massive success. However, I think where his, his chances of being a Smash falls short is the fact that his series really doesn't have much association with Nintendo. Well, yes, it'd be a big deal to have him in Smash. It just doesn't seem like he would fit very well in with, you know, the rest of the Nintendo cast. Solaire from Dark Souls. Dark Souls had their remastered version on Switch. Raise the Sun got his own amiibo. So you know what? There could be some sort of Dark Souls representation here in Smash. I think where it might fall short is the unique moveset part of this character. It's like, I'm I'm not sure where they would really draw inspiration because it's, you know, it's another user of either a sword or some sort of weapon. Of course they can make it work, but I think there are better candidates here on this list. The Hunter from the Monster Hunter series. I personally would love to see this character represented in Smash Brothers. I think they really could draw a unique moveset, especially drawing from the different weapon types that are represented in that game. But since there already is some sort of Monster Hunter representation in Smash being the Rathalos, I just don't see it very likely them getting a character after the fact if they've already kind of collaborated with that series. The next character could be a Bethesda representative, whether being the Dragonborn from Skyrim or Doom Guy from Doom. It could really go either way because Skyrim's their most popular game, really. And Doom Guy, while well, really having some sort of history with with Nintendo. Particularly now that not only is the new Doom on Switch, but a lot of the classic Doom games are also on Switch now too. So likely of the two, I would maybe put it in the favor of the Doom guy over the Dragonborn anyways. And I'd personally even prefer that anyways, just because, you know, we already really have plenty of Swords users. Yes, he'd have some unique moves with his like shouts and whatever. They, they could do something really unique because we don't have a really shooter based character. Leon S. Kennedy from the Resident Evil series. Resident Evil has had a long history with Nintendo. And recently they just re-released Resident Evil 4 on the Switch which, you know, where Leon S. Kennedy is the star of. He's probably one of the most, if not the most famous protagonists throughout, throughout the series. And I think it would be really cool to represent that series somehow here in Smash Brothers. It would be another collaboration with Capcom and we already have Mega Man and Ryu, but I don't think that would necessarily stop at anything because it is a very diverse, different kind of selection of different series, you know. I think he too would play very unique compared to the rest of the cast. But the only thing I guess not in his favor is I don't really hear as many people wanting him as a playable character. I mean, at least his fans aren't as loud as others. Of course, there's still plenty of people who support him, so if he does make it in, I could totally see it happening. Steve from Minecraft. We already have the Microsoft collaboration now with Banjo-Kazooie. What's stopping him now from bringing out another character? Here's the thing, it just feels a little odd to me that they'll announce this Microsoft collaboration with Banjo-Kazooie and then another character taking up a slot in this Fighter Pass is also gonna be from the same company being Microsoft. It just doesn't feel right to me. While Steve would be unlike any other character ever, what's gonna be the more likely scenario of any sort of Minecraft representation in Smash would be probably me costumes. I could see when Banjo-Kazooie actually releases later this summer early fall or whatever, that they come with a Steve as well as a Creeper Me Fighter costume. Perhaps even outside of the Fighter Pass, they could sell a standalone stage of a Minecraft stage to really show that representation of Minecraft because it is a big deal. It's been on a lot of Nintendo consoles. So I think it definitely deserves a chance to shine here in Smash Brothers, but I'm just not completely convinced that we would see him as a playable character. Sans from Undertale. A lot of people are really hoping for this character to make it in. And, and I personally feel like it just, I don't, I'm not sure it's gonna happen. I don't wanna discredit just because he's an indie character, you know, just cause I'm not gonna say it like that. But rather, I, the way to look at it, I would personally say is there were other indie characters that were even more highly requested than Sans. Shovel Knight and Shantae were both very highly requested, basically worldwide to be playable characters in Smash Brothers. And one was reverted to a spirit and the other one made it, managed to make his way to be an assist trophy. So if neither of those two could make their way as an uh, actual playable character in Smash Brothers, I just don't see it being very likely that Sans would make it instead of them. But that's kind of my personal take on it. Crash Bandicoot. Now this is a character that's not only highly requested, 
but also has had history with Nintendo as well. I really think Crash might have a shot. Of the Naughty Dog characters, either Crash or Spyro, I think Crash definitely is more likely because it definitely seems there's not only more following behind him, but more fans to his support. And if they did some sort of collaboration and brought Crash as a playable character, we could see no Spyro as a spirit battle, bringing other characters in their arsenal alongside as well. So here's kind of one out of left field being Heihachi from Tekken. Although not many people are asking for him to be in the game, it is kind of weird that the omission of the Mii Fighter costume that was in Smash Bros. Wii U is no longer here in Ultimate. They made a pretty big deal about the fact that they collabed with not only Street Fighter, Tekken, but also Virtual Fighter back on Smash Wii U. The Virtual Fighter character has now been a reverted to an assist trophy, and Hayahachi just kind of disappeared. Perhaps this does lead credence to that fighting game crossing over the Smash Brothers yet again, this time as a full-blown playable character. The only reason I'm not heart set on this actually happening is because, I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't seem like this is a character as highly requested as others. I could be wrong, of course, but that's kind of how I view the situation. Another kind of left field character could be Ryu, the protagonist from Ninja Gaiden. That developer is Tecmo, otherwise known nowadays as Koi Tecmo. See where I'm going with this? Koi Tecmo has done a lot of collaborations with Nintendo with the recent Warriors games, so they are very prominent with Nintendo right now. Of all their IP series and characters, it really seems like Ninja Gaiden is the one that had the most in influential history with Nintendo, and it would be kind of cool to see another retro representative in the DLC Fighter Pass, kind of matching alongside, you know, with like Simon and Richter. I think he could have a pretty unique moveset using his shurikens and stuff. Not many people are talking about it, but it could be something no one really expected to happen. Next character is Tracer from Overwatch. So initially, I kind of wrote this character off as probably not going to be very likely, even though, yes, Blizzard has a big prominence in the gaming industry, it just really, really have much association with Nintendo. Sure, they brought over Diablo onto the Switch last year, but beyond that, they really haven't shown much support to the console. However, recently, there's been a development where there was an Amazon listing that went up that was immediately taken down. It was from the company Hore that is partnered with Nintendo and publishes a lot of officially licensed Nintendo merchandise or other accessories for Nintendo Switch. In this instance specifically, it was a Overwatch themed carrying case for the Nintendo Switch. It's not like this is just some random company making some cheap knockoff. No, from the listing we saw, it's an officially licensed Switch case, meaning we could be seeing Overwatch coming to Switch within the next few months. And while yes, of course, I don't want to jump the gun and say that immediately means Tracer is coming to Smash, I think it does give a very high indication that perhaps it could be a possibility. Like I said, Blizzard has left a big impact on the gaming industry as well as Overwatch being a great representative of team-based shooters. I think Tracer could have a really unique representation in Smash. She could be able to use her blink abilities to zip around the stage. She could use her recall to kind of teleport back to a previous instance of where she was standing to get a little bit of health back. I think there are ways to really translate this character and it would make her totally like no other character in the game. Now, finally moving on to the last set of these characters being some square representatives. First one being 2B from Near Automata. Also technically a platinum character, but I mean, platinum with Bayonetta is already represented in Smash Bros. So I, I see no problem there. 2B has placed very high in, in Japanese as well as worldwide polls for some sort of speculation for DLC Fighter Pass characters. I think she could really bring something unique here to the table, and it would be, of course, a brand new series to be represented here in Smash Bros. The next character, of course, is Sora from Kingdom Hearts. This character is definitely a super highly requested character, beloved by so many Nintendo fans. But considering all of the handheld titles have been basically exclusive to Nintendo consoles for the longest time. I just think the biggest hiccup with this character is the collaboration with Disney. There's a lot of hoops to jump through when it comes to the rights of the characters because it has, because he has such close association with, you know, actual Disney characters. But I know it would make a lot of fans happy to see Sora fighting along the rest of their favorite classic Nintendo characters. The final Square character I wanted to bring up is of course, Geno from Super Mario RPG. Now, technically he would be a first party, first party character. He'd be technically having the Mario icon which would be kind of interesting compared to all the rest of the DLC fighters. But he is technically a square character since they've collaborated with him. I know a lot of people just say, give up on hope on him, he's a spirit now. But I think of all the characters we've talked about so far, you know, they made such a big deal about the fact that they were, he had a Mii Fighter costume in Smash Bros. Wii. Way more than Heihachi, way more than even Rex and when they showed off for Ultimate. Geno had his own splash screen as a Mii Fighter, and that's, that's like unheard of compared to the rest of the cast. I think there is a reason that that Mii Fighter costume didn't come back. So perhaps Sakurai really did pull it off and finally brought Geno here to Smash Bros. Well, of these characters, who I actually think the final two characters will be, it's really hard to say. I think Gino is probably going to be a lock-in. He is one of 
the most highly requested characters in Smash. He has been ranking the polls since the Smash Battle in Wii U and even before then as a character being, I personally think Sakurai has finally pulled it off and we can finally see him coming around. Yes, it would be another Square representative in the DLC Fighter Pass, but like I previously mentioned, he's technically listed as a Mario character. And so anyway, he kind of goes undercover as a pseudo third party character, but at the same time, maybe even a first party. The problem then we're left with is now, well, now we already have two square representatives in the fighter pass. And while I definitely could see and really hope Sora would be that final character, it just makes it a tricky situation when you already have Geno as well as the hero from Dragon Quest. And the other character I think having a really great chance is probably Tracer. Now with that recent development, knowing that Overwatch is probably going to be coming to the Switch very soon, I think it really makes a lot of sense to have her as a playable character because she would be just unlike any other character, and I personally would love to play her and see her here in the game. All I know is whatever these final two characters are going to be, they are going to be the heavy hitters, they are going to be some of the most, if not the most, highest requested characters in Smash. Whether it be someone from this list or someone we didn't even see coming, or dare I say it, Sakurai just throws us the meanest, the fattest, the juiciest curveball of all of the last final character being Waluigi. Wow! No one would see that coming because he has set up the expectation of, you know, it's third party characters, it's new representative series, it's even new collaborations with new companies. All of a sudden, boom, first party character, Mario character again. Nobody would see that coming. But who do you think the remaining two final newcomers for the DLC Fighter Pass will be? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to give this video a big awesome like. And if you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I almost forgot the name of the game. I'm sure we're going to be hearing news about some sort of release date for Banjo within the next month-ish. Maybe some sort of trailer showcasing what other kind of Microsoft content is going to come along the line. Rare character spirits like Battletoads and whatnot. As well as potentially maybe announcing, you know, Minecraft Mii Fighter costumes or something along the lines of that. So we have that to look forward to in the next month or so. And uh, yeah. So thanks again guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya! Thank you.